Welcome to the Triforce Podcast. <laughs> Woo! In the year 2323. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the future man. is a bleak place. We wander the blasted landscape. I'm glad we survived. I'm glad we made it to the year 2323. What kind of things can we look forward to in this? Blessing? A quick death. Oh, <laughs> nice. Take you have to play to... the theremin when you say that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I need to get my theremin it needs, to, it needs the backing under it. Ask me a question. Uh, what, what's, what, what's happening in the future? But my theremin stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Oh, no. Wait, Shit. why did this stop Troubleshooting working? issues. Oh, fuck yeah, the well, well, I'm not surprised. A future, Phil, you know, that is the future. Like, I feel like every time... They've had these expos, you know, the world. You're wrong! <laughs> the future <laughs> is controlled! The world expos. Do you know what I mean? Every time anyone has tried to show off the future or yeah. come up with futuristic ideas to do stuff, it's always gone wrong somehow, right? Everyone throughout history has always tried to predict the future and come up with yeah. these Like the first time they ever plans. tried to fly the plane, remember? It was like a bicycle with wings attached on it. And they were like, <laughs> yeah, they thought that was gonna this work. is going to be idiots. incredible. And then, yeah, it just crashed into a pile of garbage. So interestingly, I did read an article, which was, it was a, they, they sort of, um, they had a, a paper from like 1910. And this guy had sat down and said, I'm going to try and predict, the, you know, this is the way things will be done in the future. And there were quite a few things that he was right about. There was a lot he was wrong about, but there were some things like people will be able to work via some kind of remote terminal like they will communicate with the typewriter and the message will be sent you know i mean they couldn't visualize i mean he couldn't imagine smartphones because they had nothing even approaching that kind of technology no but they understood you can look at stuff we do now and think there's a better way to do this wouldn't it be cool if yeah i remember i remember games didn't you remember when, when i was a kid i remember playing games at my friend's house and thinking one day we'll be able to just do this i'll be in my house they'll be in their house it'll work i don't know how like we had no idea what the system would be yeah that there would be its whole network called the internet that was going to be constructed and we'd all be on it like that was not a thing and the idea that i could be wirelessly onto it mind-blowing but you could also imagine it if you were if you were a smart person i mean arthur c Clarke didn't he come up with geosynchronous satellites wasn't that his idea and everyone copied that i'm pretty <laughs> sure it is what would have been more impressive is if in 1910 this guy was able to predict uh, Overwatch porn. That would have been. <laughs> that would have been. Would have been something stunning. Would have been yeah, something. I would have just been like, "How did this guy what do it?" What would their equivalent have been? I don't uh, know. Like back porn. then, it was like if you saw a lady's ankle, it, that was like your load was gone. I think like, I don't know if in I don't know if I, I think that was just the hoity-toity end of society that was ankle. I'm pretty sure everybody else was just doing whatever the fuck they wanted. And porn was a thing, for sure. I'm pretty sure one of the first films ever made was pornographic. Yeah, I think a lot of... Uh, they used to do like lots of drawings, right? It and was peep like shows and shit. Peep shows yeah, and drawings Yeah, they used to keep stuff. like um, naughty naughty black and white sort of daguerreotypes or whatever they were called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, hidden paneling see, under the... You can look them up the on the internet, I mean, if you want to, if that's your, your thing or whatever. They're, yeah. It's come a long hey, talk, way. Talk, Let's put it that way. Talking about sex, all right, so... We were having a conversation. I've, I've noticed that my Discord has become a place where a lot of people just hang out and chat. Because obviously, I mean, they've always done that, but generally around playing games. Whereas now people are watching TV shows together and they're chatting on my Discord and stuff like that. Like it's a real little community. And I like that. But one of the conversations we had the other day was about uh, gay slang. Because one of my mods is, is a gay guy. And he's the sort of, he's the go-to authority on what is a bear? What, is, what, speci what specifically makes a gay per a gay man a bear right. um so he's he's gay and he gave us the full lowdown right and i thought it'd be fun if we did a quiz because like me you guys are probably going to be clueless about most of this stuff yeah. so i've got a couple of tests for you guys that i prepared ahead of time right so uh you each get a turn to answer each question uh what what is a bear this is quite an easy one. Oh right who starts um what in, in gay slang if if, in if gay, they, you refer to this, another is, man is everything in this gay slang? Yes, so this is a this, this is, is a, a this gay is, slang quiz. The gay slang quiz. The gay slang quiz. The gay slang quiz. Twink, chicken, cub, twunk, gay men. I would imagine that I I don't know exactly what a bear is, but I'd imagine that it it would be somehow the dominant person in the sexual transaction or like <laughs> 
just a big hairy gay man. Okay, Lewis. Uh, y- yeah, I think um, it's definitely a kind of a, Lewis knows a, already. He's... Is it more of a kind of? I I I don't want to be um, rude, uh, but is it sort of a more of a, a type of, of of gay man or a, a, a sort of a, a, one of these sort of? I don't know. It's, it is like a putting someone in a box. You can't isn't ask it? questions. No. So just say what you think. Yeah, it is. it's it's definitely. It's got claws. He's got big teeth. He goes. Rawr. He might well do. <laughs> so the description on the Pride website is: the bears, one of the oldest and largest subgroups of the gay community. Bears are on the heavier side. They're muscular, beefy, chunky. Uh, they wouldn't dream of shaving their body hair, so they're covered in hair. They're big lads, and they have a beard, and they exude masculinity, but. They're apparently some of the kindest men you meet. Oh, mean. cuddly. That makes sense. Now, here's a sub What bear. is a polar bear? Uh, an, just an older bear whose hair has gone white, but still Perfect. You're exudes right. masculinity, but <laughs> still right. is one of the cuddliest old <laughs> silver foxes you've right. ever met. So like That's 100%. Pol- a polar bear. Geralt of Rivia. Yeah. Would he, All right. would so, he be a... Yeah. So what? what is... No, I don't think Geralt would be a... He, he would... Well, we'll come to him later, but he would not be a bear. Okay. What is a cub? Oh God! <laughs> uh, uh, is it a a, 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 a pre a um, pre bear a bearescent bear like a, <laughs> a, a pre bear as- aspirant? <laughs> He wants the, uh, to be. This is this is very accurate. A baby bear, as bears are typically older men. The cubs are younger men who will yeah, be this, bears. This isn't They're as on difficult their way. as I thought it was going to be. Just wait, honestly. it gets harder. It gets okay, harder. Okay, okay. Well, it it gets more difficult, I should say. All right, okay. Okay, so here we, here we go. Chicken slash twink slash twunk. And I want definitions for each of those three. Chicken, twink, twunk. As they're related, but there's a subtle difference between each. Right. Right. Um, well, we know, <laughs> we've heard of the twink, most most okay. obviously, right? I think that's, we've all heard of twinks, yeah. So right. that's like, which is of, like a young... It's kind of a young, effeminate, slightly effeminate, <clears throat> yes. Yeah, slightly effeminate gay guy. Um, who is usually shaved and... Exactly. Um, a, bit, a bit sort of old school gay, a little bit flo- fla- flouncy, flouncy. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I don't know that word. You know, I guess would yeah, be the word, but yeah, sure. Yeah, I guess not. Not perhaps. S- yeah. Yeah. Maybe it maybe uses that um, the stereotypical gay guy voice as well, and doesn't doesn't care about it. Wants people to know he's gay. Right. Um, maybe. So a chicken is that is that what a chicken is then? No, no, no. What no, is that a was chicken? A, that's oh. a twink that you just described. I think What's that was a, a twink. Okay. What yeah. was the other one? Chicken twink and twunk. 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 Oh my gosh. A, t- a chicken, I'll help you out, is just a younger twink. Okay. 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 So a younger twink is a chicken. Then you've got twinks. Then you've got twunks. What's a twunk? What, just an older twink? No. Just like a some ancient decrepit twink? It's like, no. Is it like your day, uncle? Your uncle back, twink? Back no. in my like day, I used to do cosplay as a mermaid and do a SMR, but now I'm too old. <laughs> <laughs> is it like, a uh, is, is it um, like your okay, gay well, uncle who helps you out no, and teaches you no. how to be a twink? No, it's a, a more muscular twink. Oh. So the oh. example, that, the example right. that, that Dave gave me was Justin Bieber was a chicken, then he became a twink, and now he's beefed up. He's a twunk. Right. Okay. What? Has Bieber beefed up? He's beefed up, yeah. Oh, All right, God. so here's, here's the next one. An otter. <laughs> An otter. Yeah. I don't, is somebody who is just covered in lube constantly? <laughs> no, is this... Is I this... always say otters are slippery and like they look lubricated. I thought maybe that was just like a one for one. <laughs> this man is just constantly... Constantly lube. Slathered in lube. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that. No, is, it, okay. is it like in between the two? Between what two? Is it between the twink and the bear? So it's like they have... They, they don't... They're not fully shaved, but they're not like... They're not like um, but nah, they're like well groomed, aren't they? This is exactly right. That is an otter. Well, they well come groomed. in all shapes and sizes, uh, with all ages and all different kinds of facial hair. But they're not big enough to be a bear, and they're not small enough to be a twink. So kind of medium build. They often trim their chest hair and manscape their bodies, but they always have at least some hair. Right. Okay. Give me one second so, here. What is the? I mean, if we were to categorize ladies. Uh, I, I, I was going to come to that point after this. Okay. All right, I was going to do that after this, and I have an important question to ask. All right, trust me, I've got this all planned out. Okay. Okay. All right. So Good we, Lord. we did that. A wolf. A wolf. A wolf. 
uh, a very uh, aggressively gay man. Maybe it's who's ag- he's aggressively gay. Is it a gay man who preys on um, a younger gay men and, and eats them, devours or, them, or or is he drags um, them back to his lair to feed his family? Wait, no, but that's wolves. a bear, right? Well, well okay, a wolf oh, yeah. is not is not as big as a bear, but I think it has something to do with um, uh, insisting that they're not gay all the time, but they are gay. Okay, it's not that. Right, okay. So they're, they're similar to an otter. They're somewhere between a twink and a bear, but the key difference is they tend to be lean and muscular and sexually aggressive. Right, okay. So they're yeah. sort of, you know, on the hunt sort of thing. So a right. wolf might be one that you would warn a twink Careful, that guy's a bit of a wolf. You know what I mean. Go for an otter. Right. Ease yourself in. Anyway, right? Uh, otter like, or, otter's like a relationship, whereas um, no, I, otter are like is a description of a person. I, I think yes, no. All right, yes, absolutely right. Gym rat. Uh, this is a fairly obvious one. Yeah, that's the gay guy you see at the gym, just all the time. Like yeah. he's obsessed with the gym. Well, there, right, so that is a term that's not necessarily gay. I would have used that for other people. He looks like a young Dustin Hoffman. Like a Ratto Rizzo, but is in good shape and goes to the gym all the time. Constantly, exactly. I didn't a giraffe. This is a this is a good one. A giraffe. A giraffe. A, a really tall gay guy. <laughs> a very tall gay man. With That's a, it. With a, with a very long. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, I use that all again. Right. These these last two, I've used them for straight people. Um, okay. Just a casually, pig. like Lydia's I giraffe. I, I, it, this, I find this weird because I just don't. I don't think of any people like even like gay straight. No matter like I wouldn't describe anybody like like any of these. No, things. you're right. Putting the, put these categories is unusual, isn't it? Um, and they but, always they they do seem to sort of revolve around um, like like sex in like either very obvious ways or loose ways as well, right? Like, right. I, everything but, comes well, back. I kind of like about it. That after the quiz, I kind of like it. Like if I was on a dating us. site. You know, and and I, I'd, you know, I, I was able to get more information than just, you know, if, if people it, were, but, right, you know, again, good. just do Sorry. the quiz, and this is all part of the ongoing <laughs> conversation. Just finish this, for God's right. sake. A pig, a pig. No one wants a to pig. define themselves as a pig. Uh, so I guess that's something which is slightly derogatory. Is it someone? Is it a, a gay guy who doesn't take care of himself? He doesn't groom. He doesn't look after himself. He's slob. No, it, it, a pig is purely focused on sex, and they're often into the kinkier and perhaps seedier sexual practices. Right, that's Ooh. a pig. That's a pig. Okay, a chicken hawk. A chicken hawk. So think back to what a chicken was. Uh, what might a chicken? Hawk oh, is it be? like a shark? Um, is that someone... like is that like a precursor to becoming a like a wolf or something? No. <sighs> is it right. like someone who preys on young twinks? Like. Like um, like exactly fre- right. like fresh an older week. man who pursues chickens and twinks and twinks. That's a chicken hawk. Oh, oh chicken right. Hawk. So he right. just so that's his type. And then uh, and then I, that that's pretty much it. The other ones I don't really understand. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> those are those are it. So so that is a definer of what his type is. Do you know what I mean? Like if yes. he is, he's into, not doesn't matter about their age, but it's about their um their body type that he's interested right. in. But yeah. there's body type, what they're what they're into, perhaps a bit of their An dating attitude. style, their personality, yeah. what kind of sex they're looking for. So a lot of these will be on Grinder. So if you look on Grinder, it'll describe very simply, I'm a this, I'm looking for a that, bam. Right. And just like you were saying, I, I think it's it's a, a very male way of approaching dating, having a code, understanding I pretty much fit into this box, and if I do, I, I know what I'm looking for, and that guy pretty much fits into that box. Obviously, no one is precisely going to fit one of these categories, but it's a vague idea, and there are definitely it's really I mean, interesting. I, you, you know, I've seen guys that are definitely bears. They fit the cat. That would be the description. And all right, they might not be like a typical bear, but generally, that's how you would describe. Do you them. reckon people Twinks, try you know, all that kind of stuff? Because obviously, everyone is different and independent in their own way and wants to be but do you reckon and i don't know this people because of these categories try and fit more into them they like i I want to be and do you reckon they can move as well can you can you I change category i guess you can like, i mean you can go from chicken to twink to twunk yeah presumably but, if you were an otter and it wasn't working out maybe become a bit more wolfy or you start off as an otter and you 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 know you end up end up as a wolf and then maybe oh, later you become a chicken hawk. well maybe you can't change it though sometimes i guess some otters are just wolves because they um, are more an otter in a wolf in otter's clothing. Be yeah. Careful. Whereas I guess like sometimes you need to if you if you like the idea of a certain image or you're trying to meet the or you, you think that that's something you'd like to be you can you know shave yourself a bit more and job done. Right. There you go. But but I think it's interesting what you were saying about 
as as straight men, if we were to categorize women as animals according to this very specific category and say, I'm a this and I'm looking for a that, I think it would go down very poorly. Oh. Which is interesting. Yeah. Because if if, we, if you were on Tinder and we just had a heterosexual equivalent of describing who we are in animal terms, like according to a very specific set of stereotypes, and we're looking for a woman who identifies as one of these specific stereotypes, I don't know if that would go down at all well. In fact, that would be it would be considered appalling. Yeah. Right? Also, I can't but think I think of an animal that, that plays gay men are happy to do this. Apparently. So, I mean, maybe they're not all happy. What are we? What animal are we? Like nerdy. Apparently, I'm an otter. Right. I think, no. I think, no. Apparently, so. You're we're like you're you're too bald. You're bald. You got a twink head, an otter right, body. Uh, Look, it's I would say that bold. you're more you of a, a chicken hawk, but <laughs> I'm definitely not on the prowl for young men. <laughs> no, that's the every week you get two 30, 40 year olds in here. That's 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 the best. You're you're on the prowl for for old men for old men for polar bears. You're well, looking for some polar bears. Classic otter, hairy chest, but you know, not have not hair everywhere. But I'm not I'm not big enough to be a bear. I'm not lean enough to be a twink or young enough. I'm not a wolf, so I have to have to fit into a group somewhere. I think I you're I'm your own otter. thing, um, like a naked mole rat. The egg. You're a naked mole rat. An egg. Is what you are. An egg, maybe. Well, I mean, well, yeah. So, like, for I suppose some of them do translate. Gym rat, fair enough. Like, I feel like you could you could call yourself that as a straight guy, and I don't think people would blink and think that he was gay. Right. Um, and I think that, and the women could do that. I think you could be a female gym rat, no problem. Um, but I think that that it feels like if we're if we're using terms like that, we need more. But then again, they'll just come naturally, won't they? In our yeah. conversation, I think I think people are define themselves as introverts and extroverts. That's the thing that you see. That's very broad, but it can give you a good idea of what kind of personality people have. And I don't know whether yes. that is more useful uh, because it. I guess, in, in a sense, a lot of these are physical appearance descriptors in the same way as blonde hair, blue eyes, you right. know, hairy or not hairy. But they're just sort of terms that are more fun, I think, aren't they? I just thought it was um, interesting. I just thought it was a really funny, a really funny way of, of, I mean, and, and if you look on Grindr, it is apparently just, just like that. Very list-based, very sort of Organized. targeted, this is what I am, this is what I'm looking for. Yay or nay. And Especially if like you're a bear. Much quicker you're easier. like, you know, if you're a bear, you're like, oh, what should I have today? A salmon? Or should I have like a, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Should I have a, a hair? Which one do I want? Or, you know, today, maybe I'll maybe I'll go and like get a turkey or whatever. It's like, you know, you got, you got to mix it up. You got to mix up your diet. Make sure you get all the good good stuff. You're five a day. I'm sure it's like that. Got to, got to have a balanced diet. Definitely got to have a balanced diet. I guess if you're, yeah, I guess the wolves have the most balanced diet. Um, of all, I'm assuming. What? Because they just. Eat but maybe young? they're not like. Maybe they're not. Maybe maybe these descriptors aren't enough to describe people. Well, of course they're not. But I mean, for instance, if I, I would describe myself as a nerd, but that doesn't sum me up in in one word, does it? Any more than calling someone a bear sums them up in one word. I just think it's interesting that that this is definitively you know this is used. This is not like something that you don't hear. This is slang that that is actually used and apparently has a use yeah so i wonder how yeah. many like of these terms are like nerd for example i think on a right. dating app if you call yourself a nerd yeah that's just i don't think that's got a stigma as much as it used to no but, um, at all i think men um i think men would be more scared to call themselves nerds than women would i think a woman calling herself a nerd doesn't feel like it would completely ruin her dating right. profile yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what i mean Whereas I, think I think it would be very hard for a woman to ruin her dating profile with what she put in terms of the wording. I think most men would just be looking at the pictures and thinking, that looks great, rather than thinking, oh, she looks fantastic and she's in the area and she's single, but I don't know, she put nerd. You know what I mean? I don't think that would really happen. I wonder if this uh, came about before sort of the era of pictures, um, you know, before they sort of, before Grindr, you know, I, I assume that gays have been dating for 20 years or 30 years online, at least on like um, Craigslist and other places before Grindr came along. You'd and, think so. But I mean, also there were there was a lot more where there weren't um, pictures, you know, and, and so you needed that physical descriptor. I'm sci I'm science in it, guys. Sorry. But it was also, I think, a lot more gay clubs and bars were were the scene because it wasn't. I mean, it's far more accepted now than it was even when I was younger. So I think I think it's 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 probably the online stuff is is a facilitator, but I certainly think 
it's it has killed the um the gay bar and pub scene because they they just don't need their their own uh, their own you know pubs to hide in anymore because I think people are more accepting. I would hope so. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I've found myself in plenty of places that were told were, were apparently gay bars, but were full of you know just normal. Well, I was normal, normal people, people. Normal, regular Lewis? couples. Like, sorry, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I, like it felt like um, people people. Well, I didn't mean it like that. You we know knew what, I mean. what you meant. Don't we? Um, yeah, well, you know what you meant. Regular punters Hitler. just not didn't realize it was. Um, a gay bar at all or right. you know um and they were people weren't be kicked out or you know women weren't being like sorry sorry love can't come in here or whatever Dead but actually that's not the case because the gay bars cater to a lot of gay women as well i guess it, i guess they never kicked anyone out i guess people must have found themselves in those bars accidentally all the time i don't know it's, it's a very kind of tv show hollywood oh oopsie I mean, well, like Police I mean, Academy when like they go a, into the, like blue, the blue oyster. oyster yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. I don't know if that there's, ever there's happened. There's no mistake that in that as a gay bar. On <laughs> that running gag throughout like every <laughs> fucking movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm definitely out of my depth on this conversation. I know very I little just think about it. I mean, obviously, we're, we're completely clueless about this stuff. But it's certainly an interesting thing to, to have a, a look into and think. I mean, it's a very different world to to uh growing up uh if you were gay it would have been a completely different experience to growing up as as just a straight guy um so i think it would have it's an interesting glimpse um into into the way things uh, apparently work for for some gay people but certainly the the dating side of things fascinates me because it seems so simple it seems so much pe more pared down and efficient and simpler and transactionary and just like this is this is me this is what i want boom hit me up rather I, than the yeah. more complex sort of nature of well of, i think uh, i think the, 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 the role of the male and female was always different wasn't it men had to ask women out um you know women were the i i've read this somewhere i don't know if it's uh, some bullshit but women are sort of the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of relationships you know so it's like almost like if you Women I am the key master you... of Gozer. Exactly. I, I am the, the gatekeeper. gatekeeper. <laughs> That's it. So it's like when women decide when they get to, when the man gets to have sex, but men decide whether that's going to turn into a relationship or not, which is a strange dynamic, I guess. That is strange, yeah. But that's that's kind of uh, part and parcel of that dating system. And it's really it's really crazy to look at some of the stats on Tinder and see how... It works. And there must be, there, we know that there's wolves out in straight men, you know, too, because one of the things I, I saw on all these dating sites was that sort of 90% of the, the, the women are going on dates with like 10 or 20% of the guys, right? So it was always this um, top, the top 10 or 20% of guys are going on all, all the dates. So there must be a whole load of wolves out there just like, um, you know, smashing their way through all the women. <laughs> <laughs> Just and you know who they are. You, met, you know who those guys are. You know, yeah, you've met them before. I, I mean, I, They're the I same guys who were dating all the girls guy. at school and uni. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Was, there was a guy at university we were with and we'd go to the, the uni bar or a club or something and there would be girls on him instantly. Instantly. And it was like, they were fighting over this guy. And it was it was crazy. And um, he was just, who you know, if he met a woman and he wanted to have sex with her, she'd probably be up for it. It was just that. That it was terrifying. Dude, he he was very. It's not terrifying. He was just a very tall and good looking guy. I mean, he just had you know he was very cool. A giraffe. I don't know, wolf. You know, he was a giraffe. He was a tall guy. He was. He, I wouldn't even call him a wolf. He didn't need to aggressively pursue anything. It oh, just I came see. To him. He, he was, was just like, a, like just a giraffe a rooster. He was just like strutting around, and then all the female hens would be like. <laughs> all, the, all the chickens were a clucking for sure yeah they were they were just like yeah eyeballing that's, them. Uh, pretty much what happens with me when i go out to a, <laughs> a <laughs> that's why i don't go anymore it's constantly i just like come on you animals like, make a cue at least i, I mean geez this is too much for me I it, it, the, the world of dating and the politics of that is this incredibly terrifying minefield and um it's all it's all just full of awkward encounters and you know weird conversations and hungry. I mean, also bear in mind loneliness. that to boil down <laughs> to boil down homosexuality to grinder is you know we're just we're just messing about. Obviously, it's not like every single gay man is on grinder night and day just 
pounding the buttons and saying, "Oh, I'm bare looking for this." It's just it's just a com- completely different take on the dating app, and I think I, it's, yeah, it's I think a lot of people get into relationships quite quickly as well. Like after you know, I mean, I think that it tends to be. Um, I think if it's you, what you t- what, what what I've seen is a few people sort of use it a couple of times, and then after a few dates, they found someone and they stick with that person, right? Whereas other people are serial users and they are just on it for years, yeah. Meeting, meet, and they can't, and they're kind of in that loop that no one's perfect, or they're chasing something that doesn't exist, or they're chasing someone who they were with before, who they perceived as perfect, but no one's going to meet that lofty goal because they didn't spend enough time with them to see all their flaws or whatever. You know, I think that the most you're ever going to be attracted to someone is the, you know, the first time you meet them and then it goes at least physically. And then it's always going to go sort of down a little bit in your opinion as you get to know them. And well, sometimes you can love them more. Sure. Some of the things they do, but generally, um, there's certainly that honeymoon phase, that sort of period of time where you're like, you've met someone, you're really in love with them. And that is like very, very powerful. And when that falls a little bit, if it falls too far, that's when they break up and they realize that look, we can't, we can't be together because we're too different. We can't, you know, rationalize these problems that that I have or she has, or they have, um, together. Um, and, and so I always, I always think of it a little bit like that, like, you have to continue. I know it's always people say relationships are work, and I'm sure you guys totally agree that you have to keep um, working to keep your relationship going. It's not something which is you can just no, post it's very on. Hard work. Um, yeah, it's you have very to hard continually work. treat your relationship as if it is a new, um, a new one, and go on dates. It's a, it's and a very fine balance. I think think, of, any think back to when you what you behaved like when you were dating and when you were first with this person and you I mean you guys know this more than anyone else I'm sure but you can't you can't you, yeah. sustain a relationship over years and years and have it be the same as when you first met you just can't because for one thing you know each other way too well the the intrigue is not the same as it was when you were just starting out so you need to find other ways to still be interested in each other and still I mean I think the main thing is if you can have a laugh that is such a huge like if you have no humor relationship with your significant other, if you literally never make each other laugh, what the fuck? Like how do you what do you do? I think they must be people. You know those people who list their interests as running. Interests <laughs> running. Yes, running. I know I know a couple of people like that actually. Right. When I yeah. when I know people and they I, I look them up on Facebook or whatever, or you know, I'm chatting to them, I'm like, what what kind of stuff do you like to do? And they say running. I think you are a very dull person if you are listing that as an interest. I really don't want to know you because it's a solitary exercise. And I was watching a show the other day and there was this couple on there. I think it was location, location, location. In fact, it was. And the the couple were talking about how they met and they'd met on some exercise thing. I don't know. They were running up a hill or something and they were both like, oh, that was fun. And I thought we should get married because we both like doing this. And they showed both of them running with cycling. And I'm thinking there's no conversation here. If you're, they're running miles. You just running and not talking. Running and running and running. <laughs> That's their hobby. Just a mechanical, just motion of the arms and legs. <sighs> and then they go home and say, "Whew, that was a good run." That's it. What? What, how's that the basis for a human relationship? We run together. We don't uh, chat. I think they We're found each other. That's perfect. Though. It is great for them, but holy shit, what a dull couple they well, must be. No, but that's what did fine. You do this you've got, a, you've we got to find running. those. You've got to find someone who's into the same stuff you are. That's I'm it. absolutely on board with that. More power to them. I'm very happy for them. I'm just saying, how can you live that way? You brainless animals. Look, you know, well, we squirrel's know. interest. If a squirrel's interest was running up trees, collecting nuts, you'd say, yeah, well, it's a squirrel. They're just simple animals. If a human being said to you, "What's my interest? Uh, eating well and running." Fuck me. That's I bet you on, I bet you on your first day, you know, you and uh your your lady your lady lady wife to be were sat down uh together and having a discussion about what, you know, what got you ticking and uh and she said, "Gosh, I love a man. I love a man who just looks like an egg. Um I love an egg, but also I love a man who stays upstairs on his own, doesn't bother me for years but shouts into the microphone drunkenly at his friends <laughs> for hours on end." I love a man who his gay friends <laughs> describe as an otter, even though he's not gay. I, 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 that's the kind of man I'm looking for. I'm looking for that guy. That's, the, that's, I, my, that's my man. 
No, I know that you you two both make your other halves laugh regularly and vice versa. You know, your both of your wives have a fierce um sense of humor and make uh, you laugh. Not always which I think not is always for the right reasons. Very good. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should be should be noted. I agree with that definitely as a thing, and I think it's not it's not Sometimes always. Sometimes it's click. like a laugh of disbelief, um, which is not not a positive laugh. Really, it's like a. So, now, Mrs. Yeah. F likes the fact that I, I I mean she she laughs a lot at how clumsy I am. Right. Like I said to her the other day, I I always had visions of myself as being quite a graceful, <laughs> almost dexterous <laughs> person. I don't know right. how I had this idea because I'm a complete bumbling oaf. Like the number of times I don't, because I don't even notice. I'm banging into stuff. I'm knocking things over, spilling things. I'm always cracking my shin on things. Yeah, literally just falling over. And I, you know, my eldest is the same. She's exactly the same. And uh, and I was like, oh, where did she get this clumsiness from? My wife just looked at me and started laughing. She's like, you. Yeah. Like, I was like, really? <laughs> I, I'm clumsy, and I, I am clumsy. You said I dropping a plate. Really yeah, no, literally. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, <laughs> I just I'm, it was I'm funny. a little bit like clumsy and cumbersome as well. But I I I always just chalked it down to my my large Johnson. It's obs- obstructive, <laughs> actually. And yeah, you kind of walk around like a rapper, tripping over um, it all the time, and like. <laughs> Just, just, just got a big ass Johnson. It's not my fault. You know? <laughs> Swinging around. Yeah. So if you're a clumsy person, just blame your Johnson. Just, that's, just blame your big ass Johnson that's on that. Advice from Sips. I, I feel like, um, I feel like it's easy to be clumsy and also sort of in our just laid back. You know, I think like if you're not just. Like I don't, if you, I don't know, there's this sort of. If you wear a suit, you're all smart, you're all uptight, you're all robotic. You know, I think that being laid back makes you more kind of clumsy and because you just you're just not thinking. You're not like you're not like um doing an operation as a with a robot arm, like precision moving like a cup into the dishwasher. You know what I mean? You're right. just sort of. Do you know what I mean? I feel like if... You feel certain, like it doesn't matter if I'm a little clumsy. Like, I think it might be a like, state of mind, though. I think clumsiness might be a part of the laid-back attitude, that's what I'm saying. You know, like the Bob well, Ross highly, kind of... You think people that are on edge are less clumsy because they're constantly, like, terrified and yeah, that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, I think so. People who are a bit more nervous of it are also not clumsy, I think. They're, very, they're probably more precise. Maybe. Yeah, jittery people. Jitters, jittery. we call them. Jittery people. <laughs> what do we call them? Praying mantises. No, what, 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 Ma- the, what, mantis. what would they be? We I can't just know. keep using Twonks. wolf for everything. Twonks. Um, what would a, a clumsy tw- A clumsy twonk. twonk. A, a clunk. A clunk. <laughs> a clunk. A clump. <laughs> <laughs> and a big, a big one would be a clump, a fat one. A clump. You like can't a say that anymore. You're not allowed to call people fat. You're allowed. Of course you are. Especially, I'm sure, like, the people rude. are quite cool with it. Like, um... These, Isn't it the, called the fat acceptance movement? Well, yeah, but and also, like, if you, if you, if you want to define yourself on tinder is a bit a bit of a bit fat go for it like i think a lot of people just own it they're like yeah i'm fat fuck, fuck you who cares they just like they understand they, they've been told enough to, you know they get it it's not like it's not like what i'm, I'm fat like they're not like, suddenly <laughs> surprised like holy the shit why didn't anyone tell me you know they've been t- <laughs> 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 jesus they know all right um so i found out the other day that terry cruz is fat. isn't actually bald he's not he, he just, shaves with a razor every day. He razors his head. Right. He and would look weird I, with I, hair, though. I'm used to him being... That's exactly why he said he does it. However, I was appalled because I considered him one of the most successful bold men around. Like, he owns the look. Always, like you said, always known Terry Crews as bold. Right. Terry Crews is bold, I thought. And he's rocking it. What a cool dude. Does it on purpose. Uh, and I'm officially announcing he is out of the bold brotherhood. And he, w- we will do not you, be accepting him. The do, you have, the vault. do you have like the laurel, the ring of laurels, the laurel wreath hat crown thing around the edge of your head? Like the, um, do you have any like, hair? Like uh, Picard. Yeah. I, yeah. I have a very, very much Picard. And it's getting more Picard. Right. So I will be able, when, when it goes white, I can fully go Picard. Oh. But what I, would I, I don't what know would if you, I want to I always found head. Picard, I always thought of Picard as a bit of a, as a bit of a twunk. No. Wait, no, is it an older twink? Yeah. He looked like no, no, he no. looks like Picard looks like he would have he been a twink. He is quite slender. As a He's young quite, man. Yeah, he, he is. Could be a, you're he, right. Listen, what does a twink any, become? A, a twink or a, a chicken is just a very young, skinny gay man. Like, you know, 
they're young. Okay, they're, but they Picard's not young, so yet. what would you... He's, right. But he's a slender. A twink is slightly older. A twonk is just a muscular oh, right. twink. Okay, he's so not a, a twink, twink that then. bulks up. He's not a twink, twonk, or chicken. There's no way. So I mean, these he are, may yeah, have been he's like younger. an older twink, though, I would say. I would say him now, classic chicken hawk, looking at him now, judging by what that list said. Right. So these, these lists were actually almost... They were very physical, actually. I thought they were a lot more kind of... I guess like 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 stereotypical definitions of sort of gay gay men or like you know like me and Sips were thinking like maybe they were in the closet or something like that but actually they weren't anything like that were they they were no kind of judgments on what the way people acted or behaved or how open they were about it because certainly no. some people I'm sure are gay and and don't want to talk about it don't want to make a big deal and other people are completely the opposite and it, it goes I mean you know I'm sure some people are bisexual as well and some people are kind of just questioning. Um, and, it, and I think that it's, 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 it's nicer now I know that they're just really more physical labels. Um, cause that's something I can understand totally, you know, it's a very masculine thing to do as well, isn't it? Like you said earlier. Yeah. I really like it. it. it we should have categorize it Categorize and order things according to a very simple set of, of rules, like, like cricket or something, you know, so it's very, very straightforward. You're a batsman or you're a, a bowler. Right, exactly. <laughs> Picturing and catching. Very simple. <laughs> Yeah, like um, there's a and whole. Some load people of slang. can do both. Do you want? Do you want to hear some some gay slang that you've never heard before? Sure. Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. Angel food. Angel food. Angel oh, food. food. God, that's okay. what I. Uh, that's why I call my girlfriend. Oh, because angels just want to eat her up. What? That's that's, and, uh, that's disgusting. A, a homosexual what? pilot currently serving in the air force. Oh, what? That's angel. Food. A homosexual pilot. Yeah, currently serving in the air force. So it's a military thing. Angel food. Jeez. What? Basket shopping. Basket shopping. Basket shopping. Uh, is oh god, is that someone? Is that where you go to a supermarket looking for other gay men, much like? Some men go to a supermarket looking for single mums. Right. So cruising. Wait, people right? do that? Yes, of yeah. course. Cruising. All right, but specifically. It's examining their uh, their private area through their clothing. So trying to get a glimpse of what are they packing. So in Sips's case, obviously they'd see his fucking huge Johnson. Yeah, it looks like a, a fucking mile python away. with like and some they'd denim drooling, over right? top. Yeah, uh, a chapstick lesbian. So you've heard of a lipstick lesbian, right? Which is like a, a, a lesbian who's very glamorous and sort of dolled up makeup, all the rest of it. A chapstick lesbian. A, cha a, chap a chap lesbian. chapstick lesbian. Is that is that a lesbian who's just yeah sorry is that a lesbian who's very masculine? I wasn't paying attention. No, so sort of sporty and athletic. So they might not be wearing makeup, but they'd wear chapstick. I thought that yeah. was quite funny. Uh, yeah, that's that's quite a that's quite a common look, isn't it? Actually, all right, uh, all right. dishonorable discharge. Oh, is this a a, a premature ejaculation? No. <laughs> Uh, it's just a planned ejaculation into a unauthorized area. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is having a wank after you failed to pick someone up. Oh, <laughs> dishonorable discharge. Right, I like that one. Uh, <laughs> fish and chips. Fish and um, chips. Uh, is that a threesome? No, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's used as a pejorative. Oh, fish and chips. Oh, um, fish. And oh. No, I still don't know. Is it someone who is uh, fake fake tan? They're like kind of orange. <laughs> no, uh, no, but I like that thinking. It, it's it's it was nineties. It is nineties slang for the spouse and children of a married quote unquote heterosexual right. uh, lover. So a oh, guy that was, had a family. So his wife is the fish. The kids are the chips. So that's right. why it was so it's like majority. his beard as well. That's the right. other one, isn't it? What they use right, to describe. So here's a good one. Right. Uh, full house. <laughs> uh, is that where you have your? Is that where you have your entire body waxed? Is that the entire no. full house? You've done everything. No. Is that when after you've done a dishonorable discharge, you yell out, "Have mercy!" <laughs> like uh, Joey Kutsopoulos on Full House. I've no. never seen the show. I'm is sorry. It, uh, you is don't it know the banging show, every man? Every gay man in your local area, and there's no more matches on Grinder. No, I like that one though. No, this is having more than one sexually transmitted infection at once. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Bingo. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Iron, iron closet. Iron closet. Is that, is that being so in the closet that you just can't break out? You're like, 
you're like like super in the closet. Exactly. You're like in, you're in full denial in all the time. Denial, in super denial. So I guess Philip Schofield would be an example. He was in the iron closet. Right? <laughs> and then finally Philip he came Schofield, out. give me a fucking break. Well, iron closet. Fuck that I guy. feel like he was the only one who didn't know he was gay. No, he knew. I think I feel like he's the only person in the world who cares whether he is or is not gay as well. Philip Schofield gives a fuck about that guy. Well, he's married that with guy. kids. Yeah, well, you just do what you, you do what you have to. I know. Though. I'm just saying it, it feel, was but... a story for sure, and he felt he, guilty. And you know, you got to come out. But I he mean, wanted to prescribe to a certain way of family. life. He wanted to have a wife and kids, and he thought he was. I think he was in denial, obviously, about it for a long time. And he thought he didn't. It, maybe he just didn't understand. Maybe he was by though as well. Maybe he just like thought, "Fuck it's it." It's very, I'm. it's very difficult and very sad. I'm a big Philip Schofield fan. For going back to the, you are yes, the broom cupboard days. He didn't grow up here. He presented kids TV for like ten he years. He did right, yeah. And it was him and Gordon the Gopher in the broom cupboard which is kind of funny. He was in the closet presenting uh, with Gordon the Gopher and they introduced the shows and it was fucking great. What's a so gopher? Gordon, Gordon the Gopher. No, what's a gopher? Is that oh, like I, don't a know. Small, I don't know what the gay sign gopher would refer A small man. <laughs> really, it's, like, it's like the opposite of a giraffe. <laughs> Just Philip only Schofield. Go. <laughs> He's got his own category. you got to look like Danny DeVito as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A $9 bill. A $9 bill. I think it is, isn't it? Isn't there the thing which is you're as gay as a nine dollar bill? Isn't that a thing? Queerer like, than a three dollar bill would be the, the same. right. So yeah. a nine dollar bill is someone who's three times more of a flaming homosexual <laughs> than a three someone who's as queer as a three dollar bill. <laughs> oh man, someone who is uh, so so. I mean, this is the other question, isn't it? It's like, is it, it, this is the bit about how flamboyantly gay someone is? You know, because sometimes you meet men who don't want to give any impression that they're gay. Um, and you know, or very like, or very, uh, straight edge, straight laced. Straight acting is, I think the, the term used. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a teacher at school, uh, our English teacher who was extremely straight acting and he was also very good looking and all the mums fancied him. And then they found out he was gay and they were like, Oh my God. Like all the, the single mums and everything were kind of upset. Well, but, sometimes uh, they, he was very straight. Acting. Yeah. Well, I think it's still because they are a minority. And so, therefore, the assumption is when you meet someone, what that people get upset when gay. they find out that somebody's gay. Are you on a fucking another planet? Of course they do. But like, you don't like think, women, you don't think women people... get upset thinking that, like, oh, I could have had that one, but he's gay. Like, they get upset in, well, in no, those, there was under disappointment. Those... Uh, but the teacher, when he when he came out, there were people saying they were going to pull their kids from the school. Oh, right, right, this right. is unbelievable. All that kind of right, stuff. There's right. a lot of still, you know. I think there is a lot of hiding, and but they shouldn't. These days shouldn't have to. You know, you shouldn't have to go into a school and declare that you're um, gay. Of course you, know, you should. To everyone. Of course and, you should. And, and so therefore, you're automatically considered hiding it. It's it's a really tough situation to be. Yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. I think. You could see it even like in a professional business meeting, you know, even if like, imagine if there was like, um, what would he do? Like wear a little rainbow badge or a little rainbow armband. I mean, where are we going? I I don't know why it's um, anybody, it's anybody's business really you know like i don't know why uh, yeah why you feel like you have to i guess there's well, probably some pressure we have to wait but... for the generation of of assholes and bigots to die out i guess um yeah. and that's you the only hope, way you, you we would get hope changed. that those ideas i mean they're definitely all all these changes take time right and it's always generational i mean if you went back and came out as gay in a school in the 19th century you would be locked up and if well, in the even 50s, in the 1960s, you would be fired. It was, it was illegal to be gay. Even until incredibly not that long famous ago. people. I mean, look at what happened to Alan Turing in the 60s. Right, you know, he exactly. was given chemical castration and committed suicide in the end, didn't he? Exactly. It was terribly tragic. Um, and that was you know, a guy who was a war hero. This is modern times as well. Like, I mean, this is we're not talking. Uh, you know, this is not ancient history. Stone no. Age. Exactly. This is this is modern times. We had nukes and fucking science and shit. <laughs> We had Communism. science. We had it. all sorts of stuff in the we 60s. We had science and shit, all right? Jeez. People were doing all sorts of... <laughs> people were really sort of enacting kind of... Um, there was this sort of thing I watched recently, kind of um, Alan... Um, what's his name? Bloody... Oh, I can't remember his, his bloody name now. He does He does these sort of documentary um, style things using um, Adam Curtis. There you go. 
he uses like oh he has all this like massive amount of archive footage and he puts together these documentaries that feel like conspiracy theory documentaries and they look at the world in this really odd way and so he did a couple he did one called bitter lake he did one called um hyper normalization recently and he's been doing it for like 30 years and they're a little bit um hard to follow but also just really weird and wacky and crazy and interesting and he he did this one in 1992 about um how science had been sort of grabbed after the second world war and there was this sort of age of technocrats who sort of felt like they could kind of shape the economy with science and, and fix the world with science and make a better world with science and almost every single time it kind of failed spectacularly <laughs> because it sort of got off got off track immediately and and people you know it went went all horribly wrong and it and it was just the sort of the idea that the government had to sort of take take a role in in changing things and making things better you know after the scary, war isn't it? and it just it just it's really interesting really these documentaries are really interesting um, what do we think it's going to be like in the future uh god well it's it really worse. does just it'll it, just it, be somehow it's got in such strange eras though you know i think i think in the future everyone will be categorized by animal so sips will be a like an anteater a in the future <laughs> 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 you like a moose. People will, people, will, <laughs> people will have to put their animals. Everyone's gonna be a furry. Um, no, a, a I'm fur out. Sona. I'm gonna destroy the planet. It's gonna be fur acceptance, you know. No, but unfortunately I for us, it. we are we no, are the generation. No, please, P-flex, God, that does no. not accept furries. Flex, you know? you're halfway there, man. You're not gonna be. You're not gonna live long enough to see any of these changes. Thank God. Things will be more no. or less the same up until you you gradually just like. I'll be on my deathbed pop, pop and they'll your, announce the new prime minister clogs, and up they come yeah. and it's a guy dressed as a fucking wolf and you'll be like, his way up to the podium. And you'll be and like, I'll I'll be I can't like, believe that furry is in there. And your daughter will be like, dad, you can't say the F word anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, God, yeah. you're so embarrassing. He puts on his fursona, his prime, prime minister puts on his fursona to get up on stage and deliver the keynote speech to the nation. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy foxes, <laughs> Ralph, R- Ralph, honey badgers idea, across Prime the Minister. land. Jeez, well maybe that is. I don't. Like... I don't think that's. I. I. I, uh, I don't think yeah. it's likely. But well, you never know, though. Actually, this like there's newer newer generations coming up. But certainly the 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 people in power now and the the people that are coming up uh, directly sort of under them, the younger generation of politician, are just as crust, crusty, if not even more so than 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 this current sort of reigning generation of politician right like you look at i was watching question time the other day and there's this tory uh minister for something or other youngish looking guy you know he's not he wasn't he, he didn't look old, as old <laughs> we're getting as, sufficiently old right he didn't that look like people, uh, that politicians really, uh, look young to a us. really old right that's you know, that's what like we're getting older yeah crusty politician this guy looked like like you know younger and then i found out that he's even younger than i am but man, his everything that he was saying and just like the the way that he was saying it, like they, it's like they they go through some like factory or something, and they're just yeah, it's called eating pre pre programmed to 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 be this way and act this way and, and whatever. And I feel like if that's still happening today, like it it's never going to change. You know, there's it's, it's there's literally there are institutions eating. out there that demand that these people act in this very yeah. specific way in order to keep. Like the status quo, the, the equilibrium order. in check or whatever. It's, it is like brainwashing, isn't it? Yeah. I, I'm amazed that these people exist because I'm like, you're of my generation. And he's like, you know, I try and talk to him about, I don't know, anything that's from my generation. And it's almost like he was from a different world or something or from a, a previous yeah, generation. Yeah, he just came from a different planet where all, all they did was talk about fucking, it's like a planet of accountants or something who just have no... <laughs> compassion for anything other than like odega and the planet of the accountants profit margins play the theremin yeah it's really Woo! weird it's, 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 <laughs> it, it's just it's it's utterly bizarre isn't it but uh, but again like uh, it's just so weird because see you can either vote for him or you can vote for his counterpart in the other party who's exactly like him but just says more liberal things uh, uh occasionally than than he does and it's just it's uh, it's always close. It's such I a think at heart most most of the country is is pretty much on the fence about most stuff. Yeah, and you just have to lean one way or the other, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, like there's you wouldn't call anyone in in government over here 
particularly extreme. I mean, they're pretty same. No, of course, I mean, yeah. Because there, there's so much that goes into it. No, nobody can get up there and be too extreme because then they risk alienating right. voters. So they have to just be become. If you actually come out with a with an, a, a policy that seems more extreme, or even an opinion that, that is the even bite. slightly right. extreme, you're, that becomes the soundbite, and that's it. You're that's dead, you yeah. done. Because all, all your opponents have to point to is that one thing, and that's your ass. Yeah. Well, so. the, the the problem of this is soundbite. Pol- sound by policy, you know, everyone only has 30 seconds or a minute to make their point. And, you know, there are clearly, you know, we've rambled for an hour and don't get a point across. No, you know, yeah. but I, I think uh, obviously we don't encourages, have a point, though. That's that's what it, it encourages. I, I think the problem is, is that, that complex problems don't have soundbite solutions. And most of the time, people don't even extend, extend, understand the extent to which the problem is complex. They just want to hear a solution. And I think that's. One of the things which you you know you get from these big mouthed politicians who can promise a solution, um, and that's, that's what people want to hear. You know what I think the problem hear. is is that people think that their opinion counts for shit, and it doesn't. Like I'm sorry, but most people's opinion doesn't fucking matter, and they should just shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Well, they it's think, not that, they think the, yeah. their opinion matters. Well, it's and like they last week is that I said that, that, that it's just depressing to even have an opinion, you know, because you it's be, be powerless to have to 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 feel a certain way and and have no way to solve it. You know, if your opinion is that you should your house is t- untied, you couldn't solve that. If your opinion is that the government should be doing this, then you can't make any fucking difference, like at all, and you're never going to. No. And and even with all the all the marching and campaigning and money raising and donations and all that, you won't make a, f- a flake of difference to the but point I, where I mean, why you shouldn't the fuck let are they listening to you. the public? They shouldn't do that. They genuinely shouldn't do that. The public gets the chance to vote. You shouldn't go to them with every fucking policy and see what they think, because you're never going to get a conclusive yes or no. And you're going to piss off a whole bunch of them and anger a bunch of the others. If it's the right fucking thing to do, do it. How about that? Have some experts sit around and come up with some good ideas and then do that. We're going to do this. This seems like a good idea. This is our policy. We're doing it. I don't give a fuck what the public thinks. What do they know? What do I know? I don't know anything about fucking economics. Why is why is my opinion why is my opinion suddenly important? Why is every cunt's opinion suddenly fucking important? Guess what, people? They're not. We're idiots. Ninety nine percent of us are idiots. Why do we matter? Our opinion doesn't matter. The only opinion we have is you decide whether I, I get to decide with a bunch of other people whether you're elected into power or not. Yeah. That's it. If you can convince me with a bunch of good ideas, go for it. But I don't have to. I, you don't have to fucking explain them to me. Just say, here's this idea, we've done the numbers, and it's a really good one. It may not even appeal to you, but you have to trust us, this will work. Cool. I mean, that's basically what they do, but they suck so bad at it. That's the problem. They suck <laughs> They suck the electorate's dick. That's the problem. Okay, they well. want to come out and get, get their opinion and say, oh, oh, you want that? Then we'll do this. What else do you want? No, don't ask people. People don't know. They come up it's with shit off the people. top of their fucking it's head. It's papers. That's the thing. They ask the papers what they want, and the papers tell them. Yeah. And the papers the people, are the, 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 that's, that's the thing. The, the papers it's, it's tell so the people what is, what is the happening. Papers. Get the papers. So get the papers. So people, the people get the papers. papers. They people get the papers. Get the papers. They get their opinions from the paper, the and then they make papers. up their own shit. They talk to their stupid Politicians friends. Like I talk to my stupid papers. friends. They, but people don't fucking know. Just shut the fuck up. Let the experts handle it. Oh, so anyway. stop believing people who knew what they were doing and started trusting Joe Public? We're idiots. Yeah, I, I think they are too, though. That's the problem. They don't know what they're doing. And that, and that's because the smart people cycle. were driven out of politics. Because unless you're a twat who can run his fucking mouth and say, I'm going to make Britain great again, people aren't going to vote for you. <laughs> so you've got to be a big mouth yeah, twat that, well, that's the, and know that, nothing. That and is you get the elected. eternal problem with politics. Because uh, all, all of the people that would be really good in politics have no interest in becoming politicians. Exactly. So, that, so we're stuck with the, with the dregs. We're stuck yeah, with the I, I, with the with the I rejects. Mean, this is part of the problem, but I think it is it is also like we are living in a time where it's bizarre. Like the, the like the the world we live in is kind of feels incomprehensible to a lot of people because it's so complex. There's so many different even like we don't even really understand the 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 gay ecosphere, you know. Uh, how are we supposed to understand Well, I, I, I mean it, all it's taken is an hour long podcast. I politics. feel like I'm an expert now. And you know, I think I think it, in so many facets of <laughs> life. Well, exactly. All we need is about a hundred more podcasts like this that are really like a quiz, a quick fire quiz. Yeah, quick fire quiz on next, other what's, topics. What's next right? week's you topic on, be? I'll give you, I'll do another quiz next week. Okay. I'll surprise I don't want to tell you what it is because you'll 
own up. You know what? We should we should call it a the, we should call it a, it should be a segment on the podcast. Okay, we'll come up with a jingle and we'll use some sound bites and and whatever. You know what we're gonna call the segment? Pop quiz asshole. Huh? Pop quiz right. asshole. Yeah. And I'll play the Perfect. theremin as an intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, like the. The kind of the I I would I th- I think I I would recommend you watch um some Adam Kurt it's, it's hyper normalization it's 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 a movie that's just weird uh, he did some like short clips for Charlie Brooker's um didn't he do the wipe. thing about fear or something like that about how yeah like so it's all sort of, like they'll, they'll tell you one minute that one thing's happening and then the next day they'll complain about the lack of so and so and it's if, like the two things contradict yeah but it doesn't it's, matter because you've already it's, forgotten. It's what happened co- it, it veers day. from conspiracy theory to you know complicated like a man who's got two dozen browser tabs open in a major wikipedia binge there you go that's what someone described it as but it's like that's kind good. of it's kind of like this this mixture of history seen from this one guy an archive footage lots of weird people talking about things and it's kind of just just puts into into sort of into perspective how complex the world we live in is and how we're at a time in history where we've been through such amazingly ambitious and complex and modern ideas um, and they've been tried, you know, in terms of these planned societies and and scientifically planned economies and kind of in weighing up sort of the industrial you know, like if, if we get a lot of an industry going and we build a lot of things and we send those out to other countries and trade, it's been good. We've been doing it for thousands of years, you know, trade and all this build, making stuff and selling and economies and stuff and business. It's been going for a long time. We're at this, and it feels like right now that we just kind of don't really know what we're doing or we're not trying anything new. But, but behind the scenes, there is this whole like build up of crazy years of, of years of of trying different things and anyway it's quite it's just quite interesting if you're inter- interested in history and you're interested in Sounds seeing good. something a bit conspiracy theory and a bit weird and something to something to actually like tickle your brain yeah rather than just watching some fucking angry detective hunt a serial killer again or whatever we've talked about lots of this stuff in the past though about we have about we have. you know how there's not been any sort of there's been lots of progress made, but the pro- all of the progress made w- like recently, whereas the difference was a long time ago, you know, there's progress made into like uh, exploring space, getting into space and stuff like that. And none of that, none of that was or appeared to be commercially driven back then. You know what I mean? It was like, here's where th- we're going to do this. We're going to pull together all these resources to make this happen. We're going to fund the right people that need to be funded, whatever. But nowadays, everything has to have like some massive commercial benefit in order for it to see the light of day, right? Like it's all, it's all. Everything's absolutely. framed in terms of the economy, and is it is it going to make money? I, I don't, I don't think everything is as perilous as it. I mean, everything is, everything doesn't need to be this perilous. Do you know what I mean? Like work and everything. It used to be much simpler. It's been made more complex and terrifying, and people are so scared of the economy because it's all hinging on so many factors. Yeah, I think things used to be simpler. I think now it's so much more complicated that people are living in the and they're kept in this state of constant fear and terror. But the the thing about the politicians is because everybody thinks their opinion is now so important and they've become used to arguing their case because of the internet, I think, especially over the last 20 years, everybody suddenly has a platform, a forum or Twitter or Facebook or any of that shit that they think that their opinion is important. So they want to see their opinion reflected in their leaders. And the problem is most people's opinions are fucking terrible. So you have leaders who go up and what do people say about, he looks like the kind of bloke I'd like to have a pint with. No one was saying that about Anthony Eden. No one gave a shit. You know, what? nobody fucking thought that Gladstone was a bloke they'd like to have a pint with. They were just thinking, yeah, he's a good man for the job. Now he's got to be your mate from Churchill down the pub. Churchill would be, though. Spouts the same shit. Mate. He doesn't drink pints. He drank champagne in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Touché. That's true. Touché. He'd That's have very to get true. in the bath with Churchill. What does that make him? A polar bear or a... Um, <laughs> or a... I think he'd be a classic bear. A, I would a no, classic he, bear. Churchill was a pig. You talk, what are you talking about? He ate fucking the roast chicken for dinner, like breakfast, like fucking Henry VIII. Jesus Christ. Um, anyway... <laughs> Let's what? fucking end this podcast. That he ate. Right. He ate just a. He he just had a mouthful of ass every morning for breakfast. 
<laughs> he would wake up uh, in the morning oh. and he would gaze into the into the anus of a young man for 15 <laughs> minutes. And then, and then he would eat that ass for breakfast right after. Pot of champagne, oh. Martha. And then he would wash it all down with some champagne from the bathtub. Champagne, champagne and fresh twunk ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, oh fuck. We, shall, we shall rim them on the beaches. <laughs> <laughs> we shall blow them on the landing grounds and in the fields. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I hope everyone's doing all right out there. We'll see you next week. See you bye. later. Lots of love. Lots of love. Bye. 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 bye.